Hi, welcome back. Today I'm looking at the Epson Workforce 2750. I'm just going to quickly show you you can add your ink cartridges and also how to connect it to the Wi-Fi. So as you can see the LCD screen there, the first one we need to do is actually enable it so you can put your ink cartridges in. Because when you actually open it up, it doesn't the cartridge holder doesn't actually move, you need to select it from the LCD. So first I want you to scroll down using the arrows to the right and select setup and click the middle button. OK. Then I want you to scroll down till it says maintenance, click the middle button again. I want you to scroll down twice and select ink cartridge replacement. When you click this button, the actual cartridge holder will move and then you can import your ink cartridges into there. Don't try to push it or grab it or move it in any way because you'll break it, so use that option always. I'm going to click the home button to the right. I'm also going to show you how to connect this to the Wi Fi. Now if I carry on I want to show you the actual LCD screen. To the right we've got an option called AP, that stands for access point. You can use this printer and scanner to actually use an access point to connect up to four various devices. So instead of having to go into a router connect you can connect directly to this. Handy for phones and all sorts of devices. ECO stands for economy and that will save you ink cartridges. Also the home button top left hand corner if I click that button, that takes you back to home, so you know where you are. And also you can see a little icon there, that indicates that this is now connected to the Wi-Fi connection, which is my router. So let me show you how to connect yours. So I want you to scroll down using the arrows to the right, and select Setup by clicking the middle button. And I want you to scroll down to get an option called Network Settings. Click the middle button OK. Now I can click on network states I'm already connected but you won't be able to do that because you won't be connected yet so scroll down and select Wi-Fi setup and I want you to select the middle button and then you've got other options here before you jump straight into Wi-Fi setup wizard scroll down because you've got an option that says puts button setup WPS security so most routers have a WPS button if you hold it in for around five seconds it will start flashing then you come back to your Epson and press the OK button to enable it to look for it and it should connect automatically. It saves you having to put your password in, it's still secure. If you scroll down, you can use the WPS security pin code that you normally get on the router underneath or behind as well to add the numbers in there. You can do Wi-Fi auto connect if you require and you can also disable your Wi-Fi. So I want to click the home button. There's another option I want to show you, because on the Epson 25.7 it's got a new option, which is the automatic feeder at the top. So if I place paper into the top now, you'll see it display pop up on the LCD. And there it is. So it automatically comes up. You don't have to press anything, so it's now ready to be selected. Now you can select it from the software on your PC or from here. But what I'm going to show you in a minute is, when we install the software actually on your Windows, connect automatically to the Wi-Fi so you can scan Epson to your PC you need to set up the network on that so I'm going to show you that in a minute it will automatically print for you but it won't do the scanning options for you so what I'm going to do is I'm going to click home again and I'm going to scroll down and show you how you can copy like a photocopy you can scan if I click scan you've got various scan options you've got cloud so if I click the middle button you can set up to register with a cloud and then scan right to the cloud if required click the arrow, click OK, you can scan straight to the computer. Also if I click the back up arrow and scroll down you can fax. I haven't selected this option yet, I haven't used this option yet because I'm not connected to the phone line but I shall try that at a later date and see how that goes. Also I'm currently on economical mode and I've got it on so that will save my ink cartridges. Click back up. Also if I select set up you can check your ink levels. So if I click the middle button, we have black, cyan, magenta and yellow. So you can obviously change individual ones. Just make sure, and I'll keep going on about this, if I click the backup arrow, you go to maintenance, select that, and then select ink cartridge replacement. Don't just yank it out because it's easily broken. I'm going to click back up. Back into setup. Also got paper set up, so you can choose which paper you want. There, click the backup key. Print status sheet and printer settings. So if I click OK you can change the paper source settings or auto error solver or PC connection via USB. Click the back up and scroll down and do your common settings for example sleep time to turn it off 
and power off on LCD contrast. So what I'm actually going to do is click OK and turn that down a touch. You can do the date and time and settings if need be as well. So they're all in your common settings. Click back up and back to home. So there's some basics to get it up and running. In a minute I'm just going to connect to Windows and show you how to set up your scanning options so you can scan wirelessly using the auto feeder or the flat scanner on your Epson 2750. See you in a minute. Hello welcome back. Uh, I'm back on Windows 10 and we're going to have a look at connecting your PC to your Epson 2750. Now first thing we actually need the installation to so if you haven't got that go online go to the Epson website and you can download the drivers from there. Just type in Epson Workforce WF-2750 and you've got to select the download option here to the left. It should automatically detect your operating system but choose it just in case to make sure if it hasn't. Then you can download all the drivers and utilities here with download or if you've already got the disk and you might not need this but you might need the scanner driver and Epson scan utility. I still think it's a good idea to come to the website because they give you updated drivers. Sometimes the disks are not updated, so that could be really useful at a later date. So download the scanner driver Epson scanner utility. Because you need to set this up separately, because when you install the disk, it enables you to print from your PC or Mac to your printer, but it doesn't enable you to scan. You have to set that up separately. So I'm going to minimize that and show you how to do it. Bottom left hand corner, do a right click on the start menu and select search type in there for me Epson click the enter key and as you can see there's no communication yet I've got the Epson scanner and printer on so we need to set that up so do a right click again left click search and type in Epson this time we want you to select Epson scan settings and do a left click select yes so we can access it now at the moment there is no addresses this is an IP address that enables you to connect your PC to the 2750 so give a little while while it searches, you can see it's searching underneath, now it's found mine for me there. So I can select it and set it up. But if it doesn't find it, it comes up with nothing, don't panic. Select enter address at the bottom here. Come to the bottom right hand corner to your network icon and do a left click once. Select the first link you see in network and internet settings and left click. At the bottom of this window I want you to select view your network properties, tap once and you'll see in there you'll have your network settings so highlight the one you want and copy and paste or type it out so I'm going to close that so as it's found mine I'm happy with that I'm going to go back to search for address and select OK now I know it's going to connect because there's my address plus it's found your SAP printer and scanner that I'm using local is just your wired connection there so you can test the wired connection if it's connected but as I want to use network let it connect again because it needs to find your IP address I'm going to click OK. Before I do, I'm going to click Test just to see if it's communicating. Make sure the Epson is on and it's connected to the router. And there we go, you can see it's connected. Click OK. And I can click OK. Now I should be ready to scan. So I'm going to do a right hand click again, left click, and type Epson. And I will select Epson Scan. Wait for the wind to pop up. And we're ready to go. I've got current settings but you can change that in a minute. At the top you've got modes so you can choose different modes. Professional mode if you want more options or office mode. Just let you know in professional mode if you come down here you can see a change colour restoration and backlit correction and even dust removal. Perfect Tim, it's definitely worth playing around with those settings. I'm just going to leave it on standard office mode. And The first option we've got is document source. Now on your Epson you've got something called an automatic feeder so you can put multiple pages in it automatically feeds through and scans or prints for you so you need to choose where you want sources coming from so I've actually got my document in the automatic feeder so I'm going to select that but you've also remember got a scanner glass flatbed scanner on there as well that you could use but I'm going to stick with the automatic feeder click OK next you can choose correction document skew if it's slightly skewed that will automatically correct it you can change rotation, you might want it 90 degrees rotated or you might want it 180. Again you can choose the image colour, in this case it's black and white so I'm going to leave it on black and white. And resolution. Now on standard I think it's on 200 which is dots per inch which is the quality of resolution within that image. 
to be honest with you, I think three is just about right depending on what you're doing. 200 doesn't seem that, that good, but then again, try it out. Now before I actually scan, I'm going to click this little button here. And this is how you set up where you want to scan to location. I can browse from my desktop for example, or I can pop it in my documents. I can edit the file name by clicking edit. So I'm going to type in there, tester. And click OK. Next, next I can use a type of file. I'm going to leave it in portable document format. You might want to use JPEG or another image option, but I find PDF works just fine. Click option, and you can change any settings there if you need to, including what kind of compression you want from color or grayscale. Click OK. Now I'm ready to press the scan button. So I'm going to left click scan, click OK, and it should now connect with your scanner. It may take 10 to 20 seconds. Now that's been fed through the automatic feeder. I can choose to add more pages or click save. I'm going to select edit. Hover over the image. It should pop up to give you an idea. And there it is. So if I actually click on it, I can then rotate it and click OK and save it. And that will automatically save to my documents folder. And it's that easy. I hope that helps you set up scanning wirelessly. So that's specifically for scanning. How about when you want to print something out from a Word document on the internet? Well, the same principle applies, but again, it should be built in. So if I open blank document, click Control P for print. You can see, click my top down menu, I've got my Epson ready there to print. So there's no setting up additionally on that when you install the software, you're good to go. Hello, welcome back. I'm looking at the Mac now and using the Epson 2750 workforce and how to install the driver and connect it wirelessly. Use the original setup we did at the beginning of this video to set up your Epson in the first place so connect that to your router or router, whatever you prefer to call it. Now I'm going to show you with the Mac how to set it up. So first thing, I want you to go to Safari and we can download your driver for your Mac there by typing Epson WF2750 Mac driver and then select support Epson and that should bring up the new drivers here. It's detected my operating system for me on the map, but make sure you've got the correct one. So what I'm going to do is here, I'm going to select the download option and then download that. Shouldn't take too long, it's not massive, so I'm going to come out to my download folder. And for I double tap it, I want to come down to system preferences and tap that. I'll go top left hand corner and select system preferences from there. Once you're in this window, I want you to select printers and scanners when you come down to the bottom with a plus button, tap it once. And then you should see your Epson W2750 at the bottom there, which is on the network. Tap it once and let it connect. And there we go, it's now connected. So now I should be able to print. And I've clicked scan, also be able to scan for my Epson W2750. If I select open scanner, this will then communicate and you can do a quick test on here. Remember on your workforce you've got to use document feed as well, haven't you? So you can put a document feed and feed it through if you don't want to use the if you haven't ticket, just use a flat scan scanner on there for you. Okay, choose where you want to save it to and the size of your paper you're using to scan. Also you've got an option here to show details. If you want more information, for example, you can change the dots per inch. Also choose whether you want the document feeder or flatbed what kind of scan you want from colour to black and white and text. Now dots per inch is really important because that's the quality of your scan so if it's not quite good enough I find 300 works pretty well. You can break down and choose your size you want to do in centimetres as well if you require. You can choose the rotation angle so maybe you want it scanned at 90 degrees instead. You could choose that and scan to. So I'm scanning to pictures at the moment but you can change that by clicking on it and you can give a default name for your scans so remember to change that or it starts numbering them and what format you want, JPEG's normally ok but you might prefer maybe portable document format works better for you but again choice is yours remember PNG is a lot bigger, it's not as compressed and if you need any image correction you can do manual or none so that was just change maybe the skew effect and that and the colouring and that's it, that's all set up for you so I'm going to click off that and the print should be predetermined anyway for you, but you can always open up option of supplies and you've got supply levels of what's left in your ink cartridges and click OK. 
And if you want to share it everywhere on the network, you can select this option here, share the printer on the network, select sharing preferences, and then you can choose whether or not you want to share it all and what you want to share. So I've done that without installing the drivers yet. So I'm going to come back to the Epson website and I'm going to select my download option here. And I'm going to double tap Epson and install it as well. So give that a little while to install. And there we go. So double tap it. And it should now start installing. And click open. And then follow all prompts to install the driver. I'm going to do software update as well, so if there's any updates, that's really important. Low ink reminder, I'm going to leave off because it might keep coming up and I can check it anyway when I'm doing stuff, so I'm not going to install that. Click install and click. If you prefer, do you want to go in participation software? I'm going to put no. Again, choice is yours. Then if you've got a password, pop that in. See so if you can guess which one it is. And I can choose to set up printer for the first time on the printer's already on my wireless network, which it's already on the wireless network. As I said, I connected it earlier. So select that. So it's found it automatically. So make sure you set that up first before you install this software and click continue. So what we do is select Add Printer, highlight your printer, then select your Epson Workforce 2750 series and click Add. And click Continue. I'm overwriting it because I did it earlier. Now click Continue and we can then, then click Print Test Page to make sure it's all connected wirelessly. I'm just going to continue. Again, you can set up your fax machine, but I haven't connected to the phone line yet, so that's something you need to try out. So you get on with that. So I'm going to put I'm happy. I don't want to return to the previous screen and then click close. And now that should be connected. We're going to the applications folder. You should have an Epson folder in there and you can access it through there. So that should be a quick way to get you connected wirelessly to your Mac, to your Epson Workforce printer and scanner. Thanks for watching.